Nancy says, what is the recuperative time post vitrectomy? I live in New York City. If I traveled to your office, how much time would I need to plan on being away? Uh, Chrissy has come up with a great plan in that we, we can schedule surgery usually on a Friday and then we'd like to see you on Thursday, so the night before, uh, because obviously I have to examine you to, to make sure that a vitrectomy is in your best interest. Assuming that I agree that vitrectomy is in your best interest and you understand the risks and benefits, we can have surgery on Friday. I would see you on Saturday and... As far as I'm concerned, if you have a quali qualified professional to see you at home, you can leave Saturday afternoon or Sunday. Um, Amy would like me to, wants to know is natural is a cataract natural process is a natural is it ca oh, getting tired is cataract a natural process? or part of the natural aging process of the eye? And the answer is yes. And that's why I stated that cataracts happen in everybody. Cataracts are exactly like gray hair. Cataracts happen to everybody just like gray hair, sometimes younger, sometimes older. Vicky asks, how many procedures, how many FOV procedures do I perform each month on average? I would say I do somewhere between three to six for just FOV in a month. However, I do the same operations for other causes five, eight to 10 times a week. So that there are, what I'm saying is there are many reasons to do a vitrectomy, only one of it, which is for floaters. That same procedure is necessary for me to treat diabetics, to fix retinal detachments, to cure macular holes, to remove an epiretinal membr membrane, which all require uh, vitrectomy. So technically, I perform the same technical operation many times a week. To answer your question, literally, I probably do it three to six times a month for just floaters. VZ asks, what kind of drops do I use afterwards? I use an antibiotic drop and I use a steroid, each taken four times a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, bedtime. They can be used in any order. Stephen thanks me for hosting this webinar. You're welcome. Thank you for thanking me. Um, I look forward to meeting you as well. Richard says, will the recording be available later? I'm I intend that the whole recording will be available, uh, although I think it really depends on how long we speak and how large the file is. But as far as I'm concerned right now, if it's available, I'll post it somewhere on YouTube. Stephen asks again, one last question. How long is average post-op recovery, including use of dilation drops, etc.? How long before vision is restored 100%? I use some really weak dilating drops so that within two to three days the dilation should be over. This is something I changed about a year ago in dealing with only uh, FOV patients. Uh, I, I've realized that you're much more sensitive to prolonged dilation and there's no need to keep you dilated any more than the operation. So the answer is I use really short acting weak drops uh, so that the dilation should be over within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, my average post-op recovery in terms of regaining vision is probably just a few days, although I'll recommend that you use drops for several weeks. Um, Betty asks, why isn't YAG covered by insurance? I don't know, and because only three people use the YAG, my guess is that insurance simply does not find it a viable treatment. Insurance, Medicare doesn't feel that it's a real treatment for floaters. Jim says, how do you treat infection in the eye if it occurs from FOV? What is the success, success rate of treatment? Well, Jim, that's a really good question. It's a very difficult infection to treat. And in fact, in most cases, at least with cataract surgery, where they get an infection afterwards, um, treatment needs in, in, usually involves injection of antibiotics directly into the eye and in severe cases, um, emergency surgery. Um, 
Again, we need to institute, this happens only about one time in 10,000, but if it were, you would need immediate injections, and de depending on the severity, you might need a second vitrectomy or, not, uh, or you know, an eye operation. The results will vary. It depends on what, you're, what type of bacteria you're infected with. Um, you can get f uh, full recovery of vision, uh, although it's likely that there might be some permanent loss of vision. Vicky says, is it possible to develop more floaters after FOV? If so, is there a treatment? I imagine you could repeat the vitrectomy. I'd be more concerned that we missed an actual cause of the floaters, such as bleeding or uh, endogenous, inflammation, endogenous inflammation, meaning that the floaters are really due to something that tends to recur. So I would probably look harder in, as to the actual cause of the floaters. Sam says, thank you. You're very welcome. Leslie, do I ask, do I know someone in Columbus, Ohio? I don't. Um, thank you for th acknowledging that I'm a very good speaker. I like you and I wish I were close to you and could see you. Um, I actually see a lot of people from Ohio. Uh, maybe if you could find the time to drive down, I understand it's only six to eight hours. I wish I could refer you to someone out there. I just don't know anybody. Uh, but Leslie, thanks very much for your kind remarks. Ken says, this is great. Um, you're a leader in your field, and I'm grateful for what you do and also for seeing me personally last year. It was my pleasure. Um, Another question is, is there much pain after surgery or discomfort? Uh, I'm surprised that there, there really is absolutely no pain, and this is due to the small instrumentation or the 25-gauge instrumentation that we use. Um, most patients, regardless of the reason for operating on them, rarely, rarely need anything besides Tylenol. I never prescribe any painkillers because there just isn't that significant uh, discomfort. Nancy, thank you very much for your kind remarks. Stephen says, awesome. Uh, VZ points out that a Dr. Johnson had a few cases of YAG covered partially by insurance. That's super. That means for people that choose that insurance, uh, that uh, mode of treatment, there is some uh, help. Chris, Dr. Christian, Dr. Christian, thanks very much for joining. Uh, I'm hoping that we can we can talk later about this. I think it's a pretty unique event where doctors are willing and patients are willing to talk directly uh, to one another due to the wonders of uh, technology. Uh, thanks for your remarks, Christian. Thank you very much for attending. I know I invited you last minute. Chrissy would like to point out that. Um, that we are both available by email, and that feel 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 free to call Chrissy at any time. Her contact information is on the website, and again, I'll provide that for you in a follow-up email. Brent, thank you very much <clears throat> for commending us on the success of the webinar. Uh, I have to thank Chrissy and I have to at, uh, thank Amy. And I have to thank all of you for attending. VZ, what do I do in a case of a retinal tear detachment? Uh, we'll use laser or freezing. That's the standard treatment. Um, Jim asks, how long does the procedure take? Somewhere between 10 to 20 minutes once I start operating. So it is not very long. And I'm just going to say those are my times. I'm not going to compare them to anybody else because uh, some people do take longer. Uh, but the important part is just as long as the outcome's the same, it doesn't matter how fast surgery is performed. Uh, Matthew says, if floaters are extremely close to the retina, do you ever decide to induce a PV during the surgery? The answer is no, because I don't think there are any, any floaters that cannot be removed with vitrectomy without the need for inducing a PVD. 
I've been operating long enough that in cases where I need to induce a PVD, so uh, such as in cases of macular hole or uh, diabetic retinopathy, I believe it's just too dangerous in terms of causing retinal detachment. Vicky Demott says, "Thank, uh, sorry, Vicky says this has been very helpful. Thank you so much. What do you think are the greatest risks of YAG laser? Awesome question. YAG laser uses energy to make cuts in the vitreous, and so that energy I think is transmitted. And I think the biggest risk of YAG laser is that it causes retinal tears." And I am disappointed that the people that perform this um, procedure won't disclose the chances, the, the cause of retinal tears. I think for some of the doctors to say there's no complications ever, I think they're hiding something. My point in saying earlier that no retina specialist uses the YAG laser to treat floaters is because I think we all agree that at least in theory, there's got to be tearing of the of the retina. And as I said before, tearing of the retina causes retinal detachment. Stephen says, my biggest worry is moving or flinching during the procedure. Actually, Stephen, while it is not intuitive, it is unlikely that you're going to move or flinch during the procedure. You're going to be awake or sedated, but in either way, you're going to be calm. And let me assure you that I, I would be in complete control that if you were to move, that we would have enough control so that would not jeopardize your surgery. Last question. Do I repeat FOV in some rare cases? Uh, in theory, I could. I don't think I've had to. Um, I'm not saying that this is 100% that vitrectomy always removes every floater. Uh, but in the one or two patients we've had where there are residual floaters, there is such a significant reduction in the number of floaters that everybody's happy. I think I've exhausted all of us. Uh, it is about 10 after 10. Uh, I'm going to end the webinar. I'm going to invite you to come back on Sunday if you'd like to. I think for our first webinar, this was outstanding. I think these were great questions. I really appreciate all of you taking your time to come listen to me, share your thoughts and concerns. And over the years, thank you very much for um, contributing to the blog. Um, again, I'll be contacting you with a follow-up email so that if you need to get in contact with us to, an to ask other questions or you'd like to uh, come and visit us, uh, we can give you that information. If you'd like to join in again on Sunday and if you need to ask the same questions, that'd be great. Uh, I, I really like the energy and, and the participation. Uh, many thanks again to Chrissy. Thank you very much. <coughs> Uh, to Amy, um, who sent you the email to actually who set this up for all of us. I think this has been a great experience. Uh, it'd be really neat to hear back from you, uh, your thoughts about this. Um, anyway, thank you again. Look forward to hearing or meeting with you. Have a great night.